Hey guys, my name is Jason with Mount Baker Mining and Metals. And on today's video, we're going to be working again with our PCB electronic scrap off our shaker table. And we're going to do some experiments trying to figure out the best way to recover the copper, gold, silver, and other precious metals. So this again is the stuff we're going to be working with. We'll probably work with the number one today. Uh, this is just the number one concentrates off our shaker table after we ground up all the electronic scrap. And so I'm going to do a couple different experiments. The first one is going to be taking this stuff, adding uh, a little bit of sulfur, about 5% by weight, in with some flux, smelting it down, and trying to keep all the copper and the other uh, base metals as in metallic form and make an alloy that we can then look at uh, electro winning away. All right, so to start out with here, we're going to start with the number ones. I'm going to add a fairly small amount of material here so I can run several experiments if I have to. I'm going to start with about 200 grams of the number one concentrate. So there we go. There's, there's 200 grams right there. That's what 200 grams looks like. So we'll put that in our bin here. Now I'm going to use, I'm going to treat this just like I do with our gold concentrates. The whole goal is to absorb primarily the iron, but any of the other more reactive base metals, such as zinc and aluminum, Get the sulfur to react with that and pull it out of the system as a sulfide. Now one of the things, and I'm hoping you guys can help me out with this, is there's something called the metal reactivity series and essentially talks about how reactive each metal is. And so you have gold is very non-reactive, so it's at, where at the top of the chart. And then as you go down the chart, you get copper and lead and iron and aluminum and zinc as you go down. And that's for oxidizing metals or the reactivity chart. But one of the things that I'm interested in, and maybe you guys can help me out with this, is, is there a chart somewhere that talks about metals affinity for sulfur? Because copper has a very high affinity for sulfur. Iron also has a high affinity for sulfur, but on one of my last experiments, I, I added a huge amount of sulfur, and I got a button that was mostly tin, so it tells me that tin has a very, very low affinity for sulfur, even though it's below copper on the reactivity series. So if anybody out there has any information on the reactivity of metals with sulfur, a chart, I would very much appreciate that information. For our flux today, we're going to use 100 grams of soda ash and about 25 grams of silica. Mix it in there with our stuff. So we'll get that all mixed up. Because I added 200 grams of concentrates, I'm going to add 10 grams of sulfur. And this is something I just picked up at the hardware store. It's a, a fungicide, apparently. It was in, like, the, the uh, fertilizer department in the hardware store. So I'm going to add, like I said, about 10 grams or so of sulfur. And that should eat up all that iron and aluminum and zinc and the junk in there we don't want. Mix that around. Now one thing I have found about the flux is in the past I've used lye instead of soda ash, and I found that I got bigger beads when I used soda ash instead of lye, so I'm back to soda ash. I've also used borax in the past, but I found that with the fire clay crucibles that I use, if I add silica instead of borax, it makes the crucibles last a lot longer. And so kind of the, my flux of choice at this point is about 75 or 80 percent soda ash 
and 20 to 25% silica. It makes your crucibles last a long time. It keeps the flux really basic and helps absorb the hopefully iron sulfide that we're going to make here. Let me smelt this down. Okay, so there's our there's our charge. I'm going to get that in a crucible. I'm going to add a bunch of iron nails to it for an iron so iron source. And so the the nails are going to be able to take any copper sulfide or lead sulfide or any other, you know, base metal sulfide that we make and hopefully take those base metal sulfides, reduce them back to copper or lead and uh, create iron sulfide. And you can see how that works using the metal reactivity series. Um, but the idea is, is that we're going to have a metal alloy that's mostly copper with a little bit of tin and gold and lead. And the sulfa iron sulfide that we make will be absorbed by our basic slag, which is mostly soda ash. So I'm just going to, this is just a fire clay crucible. I'm going to add our charge in there. Like that. I'm going to take several eight penny nails. These are bright nails. They're not galvanized. There's four, I don't know. Six, seven, eight. We'll add eight nails in there for the iron. Now let's get this in our furnace and we'll get it heated up and smelted down. All right, here's our first run with 10 grams of sulfur. There you go. There's our bead of metal like we wanted. And it doesn't look like there's any sulfides in there. So our, our slag absorbed all our sulfides. They'd be right here if there was a little mat layer, which there is not. So that worked pretty well. We got all our metal out in a nice looking copper cone here. Let me get this part weighed and figure out how much we had. We started with about 200 grams. Another interesting thing here is I pulled the nails out. You can see the nails are uh, quite a bit smaller than they were. They're kind of welded together too. But I wanted to weigh the nails and figure out how much iron we used up. Well, I'm going to upgrade my scale here. This little spring scale is kind of going south on me. So I stole this from my wife, and uh, she wasn't too happy about it, but I told her just to go buy another one. What's the what's the craziest or weirdest thing you guys have ever stole from your wife, huh? Leave me a comment in the comment section. Let me know. So far, mine's the scale out of the kitchen. So here's our nails. Our used 
nails weigh about 15 grams. And there's all eight of them there. Now here's eight brand new nails. And these weigh 34 grams. So we used up more than half the iron in these things in our little experiment. So that worked out pretty good. And no matte layer, all metal, all slag. So that worked out really, really good. So there's a bunch of bubbles there. That's kind of interesting. All right, and there's our block. Get it away here. We started with about 200 grams. Ended up with about 150. And that squares with the last time we did this experiment. Um, I ended up with about 75% weight by metal. Um, and you can see this stuff is just all, I mean, it's rusted and oxidized and some of the stuff. So when you put in 200 grams, probably a lot of the oxides went into the slag. Um, and then we probably removed some of the other base metals with the iron and the sulfur. Um, but there you go. So now, hopefully, we've got mostly copper in here, precious metals, and a little bit of other base metals that we didn't uh, get sulfidized, I guess. Um, and so we can, we can take this now, pour it into anodes, and electro in the copper away, get the copper as a saleable product. And then in the slimes or the sludge, we can uh, get the precious metals and some of the other base metals and refine those out. And we will be able to 100% process our PCB metals. So that's pretty cool. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take 200 grams of the number one concentrates, mix it with the same flux recipe, that 100 grams of soda and 20, 25 grams of silica or so. Uh, and then I'm going to add about 100, maybe 125 grams of sulfur. I'm going to try and sulfidize all the base metals in here. See if I can get as much of the copper and the iron and the lead and everything to turn into sulfides, and that'll leave us with a little tiny bead at the bottom that should be where almost all of our precious metals are, um, and then we can try and recover the precious metals out of that. And then once we have all our sulfides, then we can uh, take those and reduce them using iron back into base metals. Now I'm not going to use any iron in this one because we don't want to reduce anything yet. We want to get all of the metals that don't react with sulfur down to the bottom. Okay, well, we'll see how this works out. This is the stuff we added all that sulfur to to try and get all the base metals out of the way. So in theory, this should be a bunch of sulfides, mostly copper sulfides with a little bit of metal cone at the top there. Let's see what we got. Well, we got all sulfides. 
all sulfides with just a very, very thin little matte layer on top. And absolutely no metal in the bottom. So that didn't work very well. What I'm going to have to do is add a little bit. I'll have to add a little bit of iron to that so we can reduce a little bit of metal to act as a collector metal for the precious metals. Okay, what we're going to do is I've got my sulfides in there. I'm going to add one single nail, which weighs five grams. And we'll re-smelt that and see if we get a little button of metal at the bottom since we will have reduced a little bit of the base metals. That's my working theory right now. Let's see how it goes. All right, well here is our pour with the one nail, the five grams. <clears throat> Hopefully there will be a little bead of metal right up here. Let's see what we got. Nothing. Well. No, that's not true. There is a little bit of metal there. See right there? Might be a little bit hard to tell the difference between the sulfides and the metal, but there is a little metal button right at the bottom of the cone. So that's what we were looking for. And my hope is, is that this has captured most of the precious metals in our 200 grams worth of sample. So I'm going to take this, mix it with some lead and cupel it in our cupelling furnace and see if there's any precious metals in here. And then what I'm going to do, yeah, there's, there's a little more metal there. Let's see if I can get this all at the same time here. Yeah, maybe not much. Okay, anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to take our sulfides here, and now I'm just going to mix a whole bunch of nails in here. Like, uh, I don't know, we started with 200 grams of stuff, so I'll mix like 150 or 200 grams of nails in here. We'll smelt this down, and we should end up with a cone that looks something like our copper cone uh, from our first smelt. And the theory with this whole, this whole experiment is if you can get the precious metals out early, Take the sulfides, reprocess them to get the copper out. Then you have you don't have to go through the electrowinning process here to get your precious metals. So let's try it. And then here's what it looks like. I just broke it open. There's all our sulfides and a little thin layer of glassy slag on top, which is kind of interesting. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix. Uh, our 100, maybe more, maybe 200 grams. I'll do 200 grams of soda ash and about 50 grams of silica and all of our, all of our iron to see if we can reduce a bunch of this to metal. So another interesting thing here, just kind of an observation. I mixed 100 grams of soda ash in here, I think. That's what I remember. And 25 grams of silica. And 
we're left with hardly any slag on top compared to like our very first run when I added the sulfur uh, and reduced all the, the base metals. So there's a very thin little layer here and it's very, very glassy. And I don't know if you saw in the video, but when I poured this, there was like some really thick slag that came out. And I'm wondering if these sulfides have somehow absorbed all the soda ash and this little thin layer of slag on top is mostly that silica sand because there's just hardly any of it left. So I don't know. What do you guys think? That's just kind of an observation that I had. Um, where, where'd all my slag go? It must be, it must be somehow that, that sodium oxide must be somehow absorbed into this matte phase and the silica sand is left here on top. Anyway, something I thought I'd bring up. All right, here's our mixed up stuff. Let's see if we can get it all to fit in here. Film and pour and do all this at the same time here. Oh yeah, that'll work. There we go. Put that back in the furnace and look at that jumbled mess there. We'll melt all that down and turn it into nice beautiful copper. All right, guys, lots to cover here. So this, to review, this is the one where uh, we were trying to reduce the base metals after we had sulfidized everything. And we got our copper block here, and it weighs uh, just under 100 grams, about 93 grams. So uh, we're missing about 55 grams of material that we recovered when we did our first smelt with just a little bit of sulfur over here, this block. So when I cracked this thing open, there was a matte layer. Here's the top of the mold or the slag. So you can see kind of the slag layer here. And then this is the matte layer. So this is uh, the base metals that didn't get reduced from the iron. There could still be some copper in there. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what this, what this matte layer is, 
Um, but I'm assuming there's still some, some metals in there that we would want to recover. So what essentially what I'm saying is I don't think this is a very good method, but to continue on here, uh, these are the nails. The nails weighed out at about 90 grams. I added 350 grams worth of nails. So we used up a bunch of iron, uh, in the process. So that worked. Uh, and then here is the cupel that we used. Get some tweezers here. And this is the little tiny bead we got out of, uh, we had one, I think it was 1.3 grams of metal, and this bead weighs 0 0.01 grams, and it's very silvery, so I expect it to be mostly silver. Uh, so that didn't work out very well either. The If I was going to do it again, I'd add three or four nails and try and get, you know, 10 grams of material uh, as to act as a collector for the precious metals. Uh, this was a good experiment. I think it, it was worth trying, but I think in the long run or if you're going to scale up, this probably isn't a good way to proceed for a couple of reasons. One, it doesn't really do you any good to get out the precious metals. If you're going to process this by electro winning, you're going to do it anyway. So there's no reason to do an extra step or two just to get the precious metals out earlier. And Using the, the iron reduction method, we still have some base metals in here, probably quite a bit of copper that we can't recover. And that's, that's a lot of value of our, of our stuff. So, uh, it was a good experiment, but I don't think this is the way to go in the future. I, I'm much, uh, I'm a lot more interested in the adding a little bit of sulfur, getting a huge block of metal and then electro winning it away. What I want to do now is I really like what we did here with a little bit of sulfur in the iron and we got a, a nice metallic block. So now I'm going to increase the, the volume and we're going to use a number 12 crucible here. And instead of doing 200 grams, I'm going to do 2,000 grams uh, with the same proportions of flux and sulfur. Uh, so let me get a batch mixed up here and then I'll tell you what I did. All right, well, let's hope this works. So I put 2,000 grams of number one concentrates. Uh, I had 800 grams of soda ash, which is a little bit less than we used last time, but that's what I had. So I had 800 grams of soda ash in here, 200 grams of silica sand, 200 grams of sulfur, and 350 grams of nails. So let's put it in our furnace, and hopefully we're looking for about 1.5 uh, let's see, 1,500 grams of that stuff, block of metal. So if our math all works out, we should end up with about uh, 1,500 grams worth of metal that we can then uh, play around with.
All right, here we go. It's still pretty hot, but I'm impatient and losing daylight. Whoa, that was cool. That was pretty neat. I'm gonna let that cool down a little bit more before I start hammering on it. But we obviously got a bunch of metal there. While I'm waiting for that to cool down, let me check out our nail situation. So here's our nails. Uh, I think, I don't know if I said it on camera, I think I put in 350 grams earlier uh, at the beginning, and this way is about 290 grams. So we didn't use that much iron, this, this iron that I put in. So there may have been plenty of iron in there that was used up with the sulfur, uh, and we didn't, uh, we didn't need as much of this stuff. Or there may be a matte layer here, um, but that, sh that actually shouldn't be the case because I left that in a long time and it didn't use up any of the iron. So um, we'll see. We'll see what happens when I break this open, but it was surprising how little iron we actually used. All right, let's see what we got, gooey or not. Hey, that worked out good. Hot. But nice and clean. What do we got here for in the middle? It's all hissing and popping. It looks it looks good to me. Nice slag, no mat. No mat layer there. And all metal. Yeah. That looks nice. All right, got this thing cooled off here. Get a weight on her. Look at there, 1,500 grams. I don't wanna melt my scale, my, my wife's scale. But 1,500 grams, we put in 2,000, got 75%, which is exactly what we did with our previous experiments. So that scaled up very nicely. Okay, well now what I wanna do is cast all the metal we've gotten out of our PCBs into an anode bar. And so this is all the stuff that um, I've done in the past. This is the little uh, tin thing I got in an earlier video. This is the one where I pulled the magnetics out. But this is all the stuff that's more or less right from the, right, right out of the trays here. This one I'm not going to use. This is the one that I incorded with all that lead, and I don't want to. I don't want to screw around with all that lead. It's just it's really hard when you have that much lead for electro winning and stuff. You really want to keep as much copper as you can. So I'm going to set that one aside, and we'll get all these put back in a crucible. I'm going to melt them down without any flux, and I'm going to pour them into a bar that we can then electro win away. All right, guys, well, one more experiment. I, I sit out here and I think and I think, and I've got one more thing I wanna try. I've mixed up another batch here. This has 100 grams of the number one concentrates, 100 grams of soda ash, 20 grams of silica sand, and I've added 75 grams of copper oxide. It's this stuff right here. And my theory is, using the metal reactivity series, that if I add a bunch of copper oxide to this, when it gets hot, if a copper oxide molecule touches a piece of iron, it oxidizes the iron and reduces the copper because copper really doesn't want to be oxidized and iron is much more reactive. Same with lead, same with tin. Pretty much anything below copper on the, electro, uh, the uh, reactivity series should be 
oxidized and the copper oxide reduced to copper. So that way we could get pretty much a pure copper anode with just the precious metals. And we, and we would have the lead and the tin and the nickel and the other base metals that go into the slag that if we wanted to recover them later, we could recover them uh, with another method. But if, if this works, this might be a good way just to mix a bunch of copper oxide with the number one concentrates, some slag or some flux, and smelt it down and get a nice clean copper anode with precious metals. All right, guys, well, just judging from the pour, that copper oxide didn't work very well. And somebody tell me why. I don't understand why it didn't work, because the copper oxide should be, uh, really want to reduce to copper metal, and there was iron and lead and tin in there, and those are lower on the reactivity series, so why didn't the copper oxide turn into copper and oxidize those metal, other metals? Because it looks like, when the copper oxide in the slag touched the iron of the cone mold, it reduced out, and you see the red in there. You can see it kind of, you know, there. I think that's the copper coming out and reducing the iron. So why didn't it work in the smelt? I need a chemistry buff to help me out. Let's see what we got here. We'll break this open, though. I had to add about 50 grams of borax as well. Whoa, where'd our metal go? What in the world? Oh, there's a, there's a little... There's a little bit of metal there, it looks like. What in the heck happened? Where did all of our, where'd all our metal go? Why are we just left with this little tiny turd looking thing here? Okay, what happened? Help me out, YouTube. I need a chemistry buff to tell me what's going on here. I added 100 grams of concentrates, and I'm left with this little thing that's, I don't know, maybe maybe 25 grams. Let me cool it off and see. But it's all chunky, and it, it, it's, it just looks horrible. Well, here it is. It's all red and kind of chunky. What does it weigh? 20, 26 grams. So where'd all our metal go? YouTube, what happened? I got I got this. I got this junk. Kind of glassy slag. I didn't add any sulfur. I didn't add any iron. I didn't I didn't it was just the number one cons, some copper oxide and some flux. What did that copper oxide do? Alright guys, well we covered a lot of ground again today. Uh, unfortunately, some of our experiments didn't work. The idea of adding a bunch of sulfur and uh, sulfidizing essentially all that stuff did not work. We couldn't recover the precious metals out a little bit that we recovered, and then we couldn't convert them all back into base metals. Uh, so that, that didn't work. I'm just going to throw that one out the window. Uh, the copper oxide still baffles me. I cannot figure out what happened there, so you guys help me out on that one. And also, if anybody can... Uh, again, give me a chart or a graph or something that shows me the reactivity of different metals to sulfur. That would be a big help. But what did work is adding a little bit of sulfur to our uh, number one concentrates, smelting down with iron, and I made a anode. This is a, just a thin piece we poured into our, our uh, bar mold there. 
And that seems to work pretty good. The iron reduces the base metals, apparently. The iron oxide or the iron sulfide gets absorbed up into the slag, so there's no matte layer. The sulfur goes away as iron sulfide into the slag, and we get our metal that we can pour into a bar, an anode, and then we can uh, get that electro wind away to pure copper, process the slimes, and get our precious metals. So if you guys have any advice, please let me know. Leave me a comment or send me an email. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.